Hello wonderful students, this is Mr. V here and today we're going to be learning about balanced forces on ramps. So, so far we've dealt with balanced forces on a string or multiple strings. We've also dealt with balanced forces on a flat surface like your table. Today that flat surface is now going to be tilted so that we have a ramp. Here's an example of a ramp problem. A 30 kilogram box is being pushed to the right by a force of 10 newtons at a constant velocity of 8 meters per second due to friction on a ramp at an angle of 30 degrees. So we have a force applied here of 10 newtons being pushed up the ramp. We also have friction it says. So if we have friction that always opposes motion so that'll be going down the ramp. Since it's on a surface we have a normal force and that normal force is always perpendicular to the surface hence the name normal force. It is perpendicular to the surface and of course as always we always have gravity and that's straight down. Now we notice it's moving at 8 meters per second at a constant velocity. Now 8 meters per second, not really an important value for us, but the fact that it's going at a constant velocity is, what that tells us is Newton's first law holds. That is, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So here, because it's in constant motion, constant velocity, it'll be in motion constantly. So that motion is not going to change and therefore we have balanced forces. So here are our forces that we have that are balanced. If we draw it representing with, represented with a dot as our force diagram, we have it in this way which would be a little bit nicer to look at it here where these two are the same. We still have friction force pointing down the ramp, applied force pointing up the ramp, just having it all come out from the dot which is a little bit more conventional for what we're used to. Now, next step. Up equals down, left equals right. Well, looking at this, we have down, but ah, uh, those are all at angles. That's a little awkward. Anyways, we look at the geometry and find that these angles match up so that we have components in our horizontal or x direction and also in our vertical or y direction due to, and these angles are in these portions of these triangles, due to the geometry of the problem. Breaking this up a little bit, we can look into, okay, what do these actually equal? So our up equals down. Well, we've got a normal force in the y direction, that's up. We have a normal, we have an applied force in the y direction, that's also up. And we have a friction force in the y direction, that's down. And we have gravity, which is acting downward. Left equals right. We have a normal force in the x direction, that's to the left. And we have a friction force in the x direction, that's also to the left. But then we have an applied force to the right in the x direction. Solving this, we move on and find with Sokotoa, where we have normal force in the y direction. Well, that's the adjacent side, and we know the and we're dealing with the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse is equal to cosine of 30. Manipulating that, solving for our adjacent side, we get normal force in the y direction is equal to the normal force times cosine of 30, and so forth, using sine for the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and for all of these other triangles. Now, we can take that and plug those in. So now our normal force in the y direction is the normal force times cosine of 30, our applied force in the y direction is applied force times sine of 30. Our friction force in the y direction is a friction force times the sine of 30. And our gravity force is just our gravity force. Same here with our left equals right. We have our normal force times the sine of 30 plus the friction force times the cosine of 30 is equal to the applied force times cosine of 30. Now I skipped a step here because we know what the applied force is. Let's plug that in even more so here. I have the applied force is 10 newtons. And up here, I also know the applied force is 10 newtons. But I also know the force of gravity. We have a 30 kilogram object. So the force that gravity pulls on a 30 kilogram object, as we know from our lab reports, that weight or the force of gravity is equal to 10 times its mass. So the mass, the force of gravity is 300 newtons. Now we have two, pro two equations here with two unknowns. Now we can solve that. So we so isolate our normal force 
And once we've done so, then we can take that and we can plug it in here for the normal force, which gives us this big, nasty, complicated equation. Oops, don't move that. So we get this big, nasty, complicated equation. Now I'm assuming most of you probably are a little confused by now, because that gets quite complicated, and that's quite complicated of math right there. Not impossible, but complicated. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of an easier way of dealing with this, shall we? So what happened when we had just a box on a flat surface? Well, if it's moving at a constant velocity, we know acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, well, then we know forces must be balanced. And since the forces are balanced, up is equal to down, left is equal to right, once again. And we have our normal force because it's in contact with the surface, and gravity is straight down. Friction is opposing its motion, so against the direction that it's moving. And our applied force is to the right, like we've been told. Our free force diagram looks like this, where we have our up, down, left, and right forces, which then we can identify. Up equals down, left equals right. Here are our up forces and our down forces. Here are our left forces and our right forces. And I've plugged in here already what we know. 300 newtons because it's a 30 kilogram object. So the force of gravity has on it, like we've seen in our lab report once again, is 300 newtons. Because that's 10 times its mass is equal to its force, or weight, or force of gravity. And once again, we have an applied force of 10 newtons. Plugging this in, we can get that we have the normal force is equal to our gravitational force. Knowing our gravitational force is 300 newtons, now we know to balance that, our normal force must also be 300 newtons. Same here for our frictional force. Now see, that wasn't too hard, but when we throw in some angles, it gets a little confusing. So what if we put it on a ramp? Well, wait, Mr. V, that's not a ramp. Okay, how about now? We have a ramp here, but this ramp is shaped a little differently. So what if we rotate it? So here's our ramp rotated. It just looked like this. And now we're rotating it over to the side here. It's the exact same picture that we had just a second ago. But now it's rotated to the side. So we look at this, but what's wrong with this? Well, let's look through everything. We still have constant velocity up the ramp. OK, that's perfect. We're being pushed up the ramp with an applied force, all right. Friction is opposing its motion, and the normal force is perpendicular to the surface that it's in contact with. Oh, wait, but we have force of gravity, and that's always down. So that's a problem there. So let's shift that. There we go. Now our force of gravity is down, and all of the other forces are still the same. And now we're on a ramp. So we have force diagram that looks exactly how we had it before. But now let's draw it a little differently. Let's say instead of having up normally be up and left right the way we normally see it be left right, let's say that this way perpendicular to the surface is up and down and parallel to the surface is left and right. Wait a second, am I allowed to do that? Well, of course I am. In, there's a law in physics that says it doesn't matter how you orient it, as long as you stay consistent, it will still give you the same answer. So is that true, though? Well, it is a law in physics, but let's think about it. There's, For those of you who have seen Ender's Game, you're familiar with this idea, or if you've read the books. Ender has this little training program that he runs with his teams, and they compete against other teams. In a room where there is no up, there is no down. There is no left, and there is no right. So how does Ender become successful in this? Well, he chooses a direction and how to orient himself. He calls when the situation is appropriate. He will say, oh, let's say this is up. and So this is up, and this is left, and this is right, and this is down. But let's change that up. What if now the surface is this way? So now this is up, this is right, this is left, and this is down. It's very similar to how during class, I will say now on our right, but if I'm facing you, my right is your left. 
It's the exact same idea. I can shift my frame of reference. So we're going to shift our frame of reference where this is left and right, and this is up and down, and now, as you notice, we only have one of our forces at an angle instead of three. Doesn't that sound a lot nicer? I think so. So, analyzing these forces, we can shift our perspective to be something we're more used to dealing with, so that our what we're calling up is now up, and we have our left and right to the directions that we're now calling left and right. And our force of gravity is still at the same angle. So, knowing up equals down and left equals right, what are our up forces? That's the normal force. What's our down forces? Well, that's going to be the force of gravity in the y direction. Okay, then what are our left forces? We have the force of friction going to the left, and we also have the force of gravity in the x direction going to the left. What are our right forces? Well, we just have here our applied force. Now, we can plug those into our up equals down, left equals right, and we get our normal force is equal to the force of gravity in the y direction and our force of friction plus the force of gravity in the x direction is equal to our force applied for left equals right and up equals down. Continuing on we know that alright well what is our force of gravity in the y direction? That's this way here so that's our adjacent angle we have our hypotenuse we have the angle and we have the adjacent angle so we use cosine Rearranging that gives us that the force of gravity in the y direction is equal to the force of gravity, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 30 degrees. Continuing further, we know the force of gravity is 300 newtons. So 300 newtons times the cosine of 30 gives us 259.81 newtons of force. Or for this class, like we normally do, we round that up to... 260 newtons, because that's three significant figures, and that would be all right as well. And what about our left equals right? Well, we have force of friction plus the force of gravity in the x direction is equal to our force applied. So what's our force of gravity in the x direction? Well, this is the opposite side as our x direction. So our hypotenuse and our opposite side will be sine, because that's our opposite and hypotenuse. So, and rearranging that, we get instead of opposite over hypotenuse, so our F of force of gravity in the x direction divided by our hypotenuse force of gravity is equal to sine of 30. We evaluate that or isolate force of gravity in the x direction and find that force of gravity times sine of 30 is equal to our force of gravity in the x direction. Adding this together we get this equation here. Force of friction plus 300 newtons times the sine of 30 is equal to 10 newtons. Now let's isolate our force of friction, and then we will know everything about this problem. Our force of friction, subtracting over 300 times sine of 30, we get is equal to 10 newtons times minus 10 newtons minus 300 newtons times the sine of 30. That gives us negative 140 newtons. Wait a second, why is it negative? Well, if we remember. Forces are vectors, so they have both direction and magnitude. And this negative here is just telling us the direction. If we notice up here our applied force, we said that that was a positive 10 newtons, because that's to the right, we're saying that that's positive. But wait a second, we said force of friction and our force of gravity were also positive. That's right, we said they're positive to the left. But when we find this, we find that indeed we were correct in saying that our force of friction is actually to the left. That negative value tells us it is actually to the left. What if we actually found that it was to the right? And that would only happen if our force of gravity in the x direction was much bigger than 10 newtons. Then we would find that that would be true. So to recap real quick, we can solve it normally like we normally do, but that will also end us up with all sorts of crazy angles that we don't want to deal with. Or we can just shift, shift our frame of reference to a way which is a lot nicer to deal with. We just shift what we call up, up, and what we call left and right. We can shift that to whatever direction we want. All right, well, hope this helps. Good luck in your quiz, and we'll see you next time in class. Let me know what questions you have.